Well, a very Merry Christmas to you. And uh, I do want to thank you for inviting me to participate in your day today and including me in your day today. I just want to take a few minutes of your time. There's this great passage in the Gospel of Matthew that talks about a significant event. In chapter 2, it says this, After Jesus was born in Bethlehem in Judea, during the time of King Herod, Magi from the east came to Jerusalem and asked, Where is the one who has been born King of the Jews? We saw his star in the east, and we have come to worship him. When King Herod heard this, he was disturbed, and all Jerusalem with him. When he had called together the people's chief priests and teachers of the law, he asked them where the Christ was to be born. In Bethlehem in Judea, they replied, for this is what the prophet has written. But you, Bethlehem, in the land of Judah are by no means least among the rulers of Judah, for out of you will come a ruler who will be the shepherd of my people Israel. Then Herod called the Magi secretly and found out from them the exact time the star had appeared. He sent them to Bethlehem and said, Go and make a careful search for the child. As soon as you find him, report to me, so I too may go and worship him. After they had heard the king, they went on their way, and the star they had seen in the east went ahead of them until it stopped over the place where the child was. When they saw the star, they were overjoyed. On coming to the house, they saw the child with his mother Mary, and they bowed down and worshipped him. Then they opened their treasures and presented him with gifts of gold and incense and of myrrh. And having been warned in a dream not to go back to Herod, they returned to their country by another route. There's probably nothing quite as magical as seeing Christmas through a child's eyes. Everything is filled with wonder, and they really don't want to miss out on anything. Uh, they're less likely to go to bed. <laughs> they want to stay up because they don't want to miss out on anything. The truth is, is adults also don't want to miss out on anything at Christmas. Our strategy is a little different. We just cram our days with as much as possible. Our assumption is if we cram everything in, we'll get everything done. The challenge about that strategy is that it actually stretches us out pretty thin and, um, and it gives us less capacity to handle or to manage interruptions. And there's one thing that I know is going to be sure. Uh, we're going to have interruptions even on Christmas Day. Uh, in the Christmas story, there are interruptions. And there's one inter interruption I think we should be thinking about. What if God wanted to interrupt your day today? What might that look like? And given how you've packed your day, how might you respond? So I want to talk for just a couple of minutes on these, these interruptions. I do believe that God interrupts our life, and I believe basically that he has to because we don't schedule miracles into our lives. We don't schedule growth and transition into our lives. We don't schedule forward progress or spiritual maturity into our lives. So the only way it really comes in is when God interrupts us. God simply refuses to stay out of human history. He hasn't come just to watch. He wants to lead and to guide. And so that often feels like an interruption to us. He's come not just to distract us from things that might not be as enjoyable or important, but to actually change the trajectory of our life so that we can experience life as he intended and to fulfill the purposes that he's called us to. There's this great passage in Isaiah uh, 55 where it says that our thoughts are not God's thoughts. Our ways are not God's ways. In fact, if you could measure the distance between the earth and the heavens, that's about how far above God's ways are from our ways and his thoughts from our thoughts. What's true is that God, with his ways and his thoughts, wants to lead us. He actually wants to take us on a journey in our lives. 
And that journey is fulfilling, it's rewarding. It helps us connect better with him. So he wants to lead us and, and guide us. The, but we're often not ready for how he does this. Uh, our expectations of what that will look like can be very different from how God actually does it. So I think we can get a lot of clues from the Christmas story because God is constantly interrupting people in the Christmas story. Uh, Mary is a young lady who's just carrying out the chores of the day. And she winds up, uh, winds up being given an invitation. And she says, yes, uh, Joseph was planning a divorce. He wasn't trying to destroy another's reputation, but he needed to protect his own. And he has a dream and it interrupts him and he decides not to divorce. Uh, shepherds out in the hills outside of Bethlehem are watching their sheep. And as a result of lights and songs, they decided that they could actually be eyewitnesses to something significant that was happening, that God was doing near where they were. Uh, wise men, uh, after they found the Christ child, they're returning home. They intended to go the way they came, stop back and see Herod again, but they have a dream and that dream interrupts them. And they're warned in the dream to take a different route. Not an easy thing to do in the ancient world. Uh, there was infrastructures on the routes that you trusted. And if you went off that route, you elevated your risk significantly. And yet they were willing to entertain that interruption. So what does a divine interruption look like? Well, um, sometimes it can look like a way to serve someone. Uh, sometimes it looks like a way to learn a new pattern, a new way to go about something. Uh, sometimes it's understanding that you have something to say, maybe a word of encouragement to someone or a prayer to pray. So why do we need these divine interruptions? Well, because there are things we don't know. We haven't learned them yet. There are things that we don't see. We're just going so fast, we can miss so much. And our peripheral can only capture so much of our attention. And without an interruption, there are some things we just won't notice. There are things that we don't hear, like the doubt in someone's voice, or the anxiety in the question that they ask, or the desperation in the tone of voice that they have. And there are things that we don't feel. We just get caught up in trying to get through everything. And without these divine interruptions, there's much that we will miss. So how do we benefit from these divine interruptions? That's a really good question. I think that divine interruptions help develop a servant's heart. Instead of trying to get everything to work around our plan, we wound up being required to serve someone else's plan or God's plan. I also think it helps to redeem time. Um, we equate efficiency sometimes with the very best use of time. But sometimes we can miss things and God wants us to use or spend our time or invest our time in something that could really make a difference. It also nurtures courage. I think we confuse courage and confidence. We always want to feel confident. Courage is recognizing that, that what I need to do is more important than how I might look. And courage does a math equation and it doesn't guarantee that if I invest myself in this, the outcome will be different. But the math equation is, if nothing is done, I know how this is going to go. I don't think that's a good idea. And so we act in courage. And I also think that these divine interruptions build commitment. That in our world, we try to reserve our commitments for the things that are on our agenda. But what if God had something else for us to do? I think those things matter a lot. Uh, I don't think God's gonna ask you to bear a child for him or take a two-year journey uh, to witness some kind of a supernatural event. Um, but maybe he's prompting you to work on your relationship with your spouse or maybe to spend some more time with your kids. Or maybe there's a ministry that your talents and your gifts could make a real difference in the lives of those that are being served. Uh, maybe, 
Maybe God would have you pursue a relationship that's been broken for too long. And especially right now, the start of a conversation could bring so much healing. And maybe that's what he's asking you to do. Or begin to deal maybe with a life-controlling behavior. We're closing out this year. Why let that dominate another year of your life? Or maybe he's just asking you that when you are in conversation with him, you call someone else's name out in prayer because they really need what God has to offer. These are the moments that allow heaven to break through. These interruptions, we desperately need them. So this Christmas day, if something interrupts your plans, at least ask the question, could God be behind this in some way? Uh, let me pray a prayer of blessing on your day. So Father, uh, we hope for moments of joy and significance and closeness in this day. And often we think we know how to make that happen, but you have some options that we haven't considered and we want to give you permission to interrupt our day so that we can learn more about you, about ourselves, and about those that you've placed in our lives. We thank you for that, in Jesus' name. Amen. Merry Christmas.